Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. I want to talk about uh, some little setbacks we've had and uh, how to avoid uh, making the same kind of mistakes. Yeah. Like our neighbors are up early for breakfast. Out here having a nice meal. Hey guys. Well, it finally happened. It got cold. <laughs> it's the end of October and finally the heat is gone. It's uh, very welcome in my mind. I'm uh, a big fan of wintertime as we get plenty of heat seven months a year out here in Texas. But hey, I wanted to talk about setbacks. What? You've ever watched a professional solar installation? It's pretty amazing. They come in and bring in a team of professional installers and they get up on the roof and put all the panels up and do all the wiring and they have four or five or six, seven, eight guys working at a time. And it only takes them a couple of days, two or three days maybe, to get a, a full solar system in. That's really nice to be able to do it that way. Uh, unfortunately, that's why it costs forty to sixty thousand dollars to have that done, um, and about half or more of that is paying those guys to install it. Wow. So the thing about DIY solar that makes it so affordable is that instead of the team of professionals, it's you, and <laughs> and you get to install it, and uh, it goes a little bit slower than. Uh, it does with a team of professionals, unless you have a bunch of electricians in your family that are willing to help. It just had me thinking about some setbacks that we've had lately with our solar system and growing it. And I just kind of wanted to talk about that and show you some things. And also tell you that there's some things you can do to uh, minimize the setbacks. And pre-planning is a big part of that. It's hard to plan out your solar system sometimes because you don't have a really good idea of how much of a system you're going to really need to get you through a full year. So that's why monitoring your electrical use and figuring out how much you use throughout the year is important to understand in order to design a really good solar system. In my case, we did that. We monitor our electrical use by monitoring the electrical meter. And we had a pretty good idea of, of you know, how much we used each month. So we designed our system based on that. Once we got everything in, it was working great, but we started adding appliances like air conditioners and, and other things that we wanted to do out here and so it increased our uh, electrical demand so we had to expand our system so pre-designing your solar system and leaving room for expansion is a really good idea you don't ha have to buy all the equipment at once but designing what you want your solar system to eventually be able to produce uh, is a good idea even if you don't build it all at once you might do it in phases so that's kind of what we've ended up doing. I've made some videos on our, our DIY solar panel uh, rack mount that we built. And I did a video on the bright mount rack system that we built. Both of those have worked out great. They're both over a year old, very easy to maintain, no issues there. But we wanted to add to that. So I did another video on the Tegra rack that we're putting in. I wanted to show you, you know, everybody's got a different location. And sometimes those can be a challenge. So in my case, we were going to install the Integra rack right here, which makes perfect sense because it would just be out in front of the uh, bright mount rack system. Another perfect place to add a, a ground mount of a dozen or so panels. But when we went to clean up the land to put the Integra rack in, we ran into a few issues. And the biggest of those issues were that we had cleared this land earlier and we had a lot of stumps out here. And so we had to come get the stumps out. And I don't know if you've ever tried to remove stumps. Uh, it can be kind of a challenge sometimes if you don't have a stump grinder handy. So here's one of the stumps that we have left to take out. I think we've taken out four or five so far. You can see that uh, prepping the site for a ground mount rack is really important. Getting the site level is a uh, a big factor and and of course we're on a hill with a slope with stumps so uh it's been a little bit more challenging than it would be maybe for somebody in their backyard with a nice smooth flat surface of grass but 
hey, these are the kind of setbacks you're going to run into with DIY solar, whether it's your, your electrical wiring, uh, getting that right, uh, if your house wiring is, is not perfect. I mean, there's, these are just going to happen. They're going to be setbacks. And learning to work through those, uh, being able to work through those, uh, and planning for those is a big part of DIY solar. So our site work has been a little bit more extensive than we planned for originally, and it set us back on our Integra rack installation, but we're going to get through it. So the best way to do a DIY solar system is figure out how much power you're realistically going to need over the entire year. Once you figure that out, decide if you're going to do a, a off-grid system or a hybrid system where you can sell back to the electric grid. That's why you want to check with your utility company and find out what their program is for selling back electricity. Some are great. Some will give you a retail value. Some will give you a wholesale value. Mine is like two or three cents a kilowatt hour. So it really wasn't worth it to me to do that. Uh, but it may be for you. The other thing you want to check with your local uh, municipality or governmental authority, where it's county, city, and make sure you understand what their expectations are. Are they going to come out and inspect the system? Do you have a building code? Do you have a building inspector? All those things are critical. Once you know that, you can start designing your system. And if you need help designing your system, I really recommend uh, calling Signature Solar. They've got design uh, professionals on staff ready to help you design the right system for you that'll meet your demand needs throughout the year. And it's free. So why not take advantage of that? These are just a few things to think about if you're interested in doing a DIY solar system. There's only 60 more days left that you can actually purchase a system and install it and get a solar tax credit. So I highly recommend if you're thinking about DIY solar that you jump on it now because that savings is going to be gone next year. And it's a huge, huge amount. You can still do a DIY solar system without the tax credit. It's just a little bit more expensive. If you need to order solar equipment today, go to Signature Solar. Use my $50 off code when you order and it'll save you instant 50 bucks. Additionally, Signature Solar has some deals right now on 5% off a system when you combine certain inverters, batteries they've identified on the website. So go check that out. So anything you can do to knock down that price of the solar system is going to help you speed up the time it takes to recapture all that cost. And after that, you're making money. So, <laughs> Hey, I'm Michael here at Terry Hill Farm, where we're living two steps from off-grid. And as soon as we can get a few stumps pulled out of the ground, we'll be at zero steps from off-grid. Really appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.